بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ البکرا چیپٹر ٹو اینڈ وی ول کور ورسز ٹوینٹی تھری اینڈ ٹوینٹی فور دا قرآن کے ناٹ بی دا پروڈکٹ آف دا ہیومن انٹلیکٹ ورس ٹوینٹی تھری از کوائٹ انٹرسٹنگ اینڈ وی ول گو تھرو سم ڈیٹیلس اینڈ وی ہیڈ کورڈ دس آسپیکٹ انڈر ورس تھرٹی ایٹ آف سورہ یونس دیٹ از چیپٹر ٹین سو اٹ ول بی ہیلپ فل اف وی کین لک ایٹ that presentation at some point there are number of points covered over there which are not repeated over here and these are the references and all excerpts in this talk are taken from the meanings of the quran volume one there is a lot covered in volume one so we can look into it for further details and this is our contact recap of verse 22 never associate partners with allah if you remember this presentation i posted on seminar group and also in youtube so we can have a look on that after pointing to the aim of the creation of man in verse 21 the quran draws our attention to the outer world and the universe since everything is carefully planned and created hence man needs to look for potent signs in allah's creation using his intellect and reasoning despite being spherical and undergoing its rotation the earth serves as a place for our finite abode without our noticing this movement of the earth and that is a very interesting part of it we never realize that earth is rotating not only around its own axis but it is also going at a very high speed around the sun the law of gravity holds the solar system together and the sun and moon impact the earth for example climate atmosphere daily tides etc the hydrological cycle is put in place to manage the distribution of water across the planet to make biological life possible this is all with the purpose of producing the means of sustenance for human beings all this is part of a carefully planned scheme of allah which requires human attention and reflection so there is a lot around us in the physical environment and in the universe and man is asked to reflect on every aspect of it whatever is in the planet is there for the use of the whole of mankind and is not meant to be kept in the hands of a few thinking and doing this is against the very purpose of human creation these means of sustenance are spread throughout the planet so that mankind can manage their distribution and utilization equitably according to the permanent values not doing this will lead to chaos and conflicts in the world and we see all this chaos and conflict in the world of today an overview of today's presentation What is noted in verse 23 is also covered in the presentation given under verse 1038. Continuing from verses 21 and 22, here the Quran puts a challenge before the opponents of the messenger that if they have doubts about what is being presented to them, then they should produce an alternative program for mankind. If they wish to make an attempt to meet this challenge, then they should invite all of their compatriots for help in this attempt and leave the book of allah alone to one side and produce even one surah like this if they claim to be truthful and this is an interesting theme which quran has taken right at the beginning of surah al baqara that whatever is being said over here and whatever is coming next if man can think that they can produce something like it themselves then they are asked to do it it is just to convince them but at the same time it is also for mu'minin to understand that you should also make an effort to understand that what is in the quran which human beings cannot think at their own this also means that those who accept iman in allah need to critically analyze the verses and surahs of the quran with a view to establishing for themselves that this book cannot be the product of the human mind This process of acceptance of the Quran with conviction of the heart and mind will lead to becoming truthful. Next point is then the Quran concludes by stating that since no human intellect can produce anything like the Quran and we can only prove it to ourselves if we make an effort to produce something like the Quran. 
And this rejection of the guidance will lead to living a life of hell in this world. And that is an important point that the world which we see around us in 2024, if we want to change that world, with that aspect of change in our mind, we should study the Quran and see what solution this book is offering to mankind, i.e. the Quran is the only guidance which can help in development of the human self. We know that unless human self is developed, unless human psyche is changed, the outer world cannot change. And that is where most emphasis of the Quran is that change your psyche first and the psyche itself will let you know that now the outer world will start to change. First verse 223, challenge to mankind for all times. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَاتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّسْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And we should note over here that the word raib is used. If we remember that at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran says, ذَلِكَ الْكَتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ That there is no raib in this book. And over here, another word I have highlighted, abdina, and we will go through these terms in bit more detail. If despite such concrete reasonings and evidences, you are still suffering from some doubt and suspicion or psychological conflict in this regard, whether the code of life which we have provided to you via our servant, that is the messenger of Allah, is truly based on reality or not, then the easy way to resolve this is to devise some alternative map in place of the map which this code presents for human life. Never mind for the whole structure, even for just one level, i.e. devise and present one clause like some one clause of this code. So over here, Quran is putting a challenge to the opponents of the Quran that if you think you can produce something like this, then go and show us that whether you can produce one or not. For this, there is no need to assign responsibility to some one individual. Make a committee of all the writers and philosophers and lawmakers of civil and political life found in your society. Leave aside only the wahi of Allah, that is, leave the Quran outside. Don't take anything out of the Quran. Go sit together and create something like the Quran and ask them to show how they do this. If you are really truthful in this vow of yours, that you really cannot decide whether this code is from the direction of Allah or not, and are not just playing tunes of doubts and suspicions merely for the sake of remaining glued to your vested interests. And that is important thing because the Quran is asking them to give up their vested interests so that society can be reformed. Then you should accept this challenge. Now the first slide is, Elaborating it further. Continuing from verse 21, where the main reason for the creation of mankind is clearly stated to become muttaqeen using the Quranic guidance so that the responsibilities which Allah has outlined in the book can be undertaken by this newly formed Ummah. And the Quran says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nase tamaruna bil marufe watan hauna anil munkare watuminuna billa. So the purpose of the creation is to create an alternative system in the world for the good of mankind in which there is no fear and grief. So over here Quran says that those jamaat mumineen who have stood up and are creating the system, their main task is to promote good according to the Quran and forbid evil. And that is how they will prove that they have accepted Iman in Allah. In the next verse, that is 22, the issue of the ownership of land is clarified by stating that it is for the good of the whole of mankind and must not fall into the hands of those who do not allow others to benefit from its means and resources. And that is another important point because we see in the world that the concentration of wealth is in few hands. Those who are powerful, they are keeping the control of all the means of sustenance in the world. And the Quran wants that these should be distributed among whole of mankind because this is a temporary stage. Our stay in this world is finite and each human being is going to die at some point in time. So what is the point of accumulation of something which we are not going to use? And as a result of that accumulation, there is imbalance created in the world.
In verse 23, a challenge is issued to mankind that if anyone thinks that this book can be the product of the human intellect, then they can make an attempt to produce anything like it, i.e. the values and procedure detailed in this in relation to the system of deen put forward for the benefit of the whole of mankind in any era. So this book is for all times and we can figure out ourselves that what is given in the Quran can and simply cannot be the product of human thought process because human beings don't think like that. Human beings think of accumulation, greed, exploiting others, and making laws to control others. Through this verse, the Jamaat Mominin is informed that by reaching that level of comprehension, where they become convinced that what is in the Quran is for their own self development. And that self-development is important because without that self-development, they simply cannot understand the Quran firstly. And if they don't understand the Quran firstly, they are of no use for the establishment of the system of deen. Will lead to fulfilling the purpose of human creation. Comprehending the importance of the Quranic message is essential for treading on this path. Next slide it, what it means to be Abdafallah. If you remember, the word Abdana is used in the verse, and we will go through this aspect. Allah has called Rasulullah, that is the last messenger, his Abd. And not only Rasulullah, Allah has called all the messengers his Abd. Abd is normally translated as servants and slaves. From this, it is evident that the Abdiyat of Allah is the highest pinnacle of the eminence and distinction of being human. For man, there can be no higher status than this, and this is because the meaning of Allah's abdiyat is, such, is that such a human being does not remain obedient, subservient, and a subject and slave to anyone in the world. Because once one subjects himself, that is his own thought process, to the values of the Quran, then one realizes his own importance, and one does not want to be under the control of any human being and their laws. He possesses every kind of freedom. This is the natural outcome of Abdiyat of Allah. And just think how lofty this status is for whoever attains it. The one who bows at the doorstep of Allah passes dauntlessly through the loftiest door, doorways of the world holding his head high. It's a very important psychological aspect and we should listen to this aspect a few times just to absorb it, just to understand it. The objection of these people was that where is the proof that whatever you are claiming is not the product of your own intellect but is wahi from Allah? And that's a difficult question. And even now people, if the Quran's message is passed to someone who has never heard about it, they will be very surprised that something can be revealed from the direction of Allah. If we examine this closely for the claimant of Nubuvat, this was the most difficult situation. No one who was not a Nabi could see the wahi which he received from Allah in a tangible form. It used to be revealed to the heart of the Nabi. After that, he used to repeat the words of wahi through his tongue and used to present it to the people by stating that this is not the product of my own intellect. This is wahi revealed from the direction of Allah. And that is where the challenge comes to every one of us. It's not a question of accepting Quran emotively that I believe in it. That, that is meaningless. What Quran is asking is to accept it using our intellect and reasoning and the evidence around us. That the system which the Quran is putting forward, is it a better system than the man-made system or not? Nor does he, the messenger, say out of his own desire. It is wahi which is sent down to him. The next slide is questioning the Quran as a guide from Allah. And their question was, what evidence is there for this? This was the same question that the initial addresses of the Quran would ask and is also asked today. When it is asked, where is the evidence that the Quran is a book sent down from Allah and not the outcome of the intellect of Muhammad of Arabia, peace be upon him. Rasulullah used to present this proclamation of his on the basis of intellect and vision and make efforts to have it accepted based on reason and evidence. And that is interesting because all the messengers first used to have Iman in that way which was sent to them. 
and they used to accept it by using their intellect and reasoning and based on evidence. And once they were convinced, then they used to pass it on to others and then explain it to others. This is why it is repeatedly emphasized in the Quran to say to these people to make use of their intellect and reasoning, to think using their knowledge and vision, and to study this book with profound awareness and reflection. And in fact, with the study of the Quran and accepting that precise iman which is given in the Quran, our own vision expands, our own consciousness expands and accommodates all those issues which man-made system creates and finds the solution for that using the Quran. As a result, this reality will become clear to them that this is not the creation of human intellect. And that is absolutely essential. This one line, as a result, this reality will become clear to them that this is not the creation of human intellect, that I should be convinced myself that what is given in the Quran is not the product or cannot be the product of human intellect because human beings do not think like that. If I never thought like the Quran, obviously what is given in the Quran is non-human. This fountainhead lies out with human intellect. But who expends so much hard work and effort, especially those people who have been made not only ease-loving and lazy by following the path of taklid, the way of their forefathers, but which has also paralyzed their abilities to think and reason. And this is important because Quran invites us to use our intellect and reasoning to their extremity. And not only one day or second day, but rest of our life, because with every passing day, if we are thinking and reflecting in the Quran, new aspects of deen appear before us. They used to demand some tangible sign as proof for it. Human desire for miracles. Such a sign which is paranormal and supernatural and which they could witness in front of them using their physical eyes. Such a sign is termed a miracle, i.e. such an incident which leaves the human intellect and reasoning dumbfounded. It simply cannot fathom how did it happen like this. And we know in the domain of religion, people want to see some kind of miracles in order to believe in something. But over here, Quran is asking us to use our intellect and reasoning to understand the rationale behind every verse in the Quran. Man being used to the physical world demands physical signs as evidence for such kinds of proclamations and bows his head before them only. And this is another challenge which is faced by those who are the students of the Quran that people want something physical first. Whereas Quran is drawing our attention to our inner psyche, to our super or very large inner world which is lying before us within our own head where we think psychologically to understand the issues first. Even today if you look around in your society among those people who are called saintly and normally they call them as Aulia Allah, first of all very few of them possess knowledge and understanding and those who do have knowledge and who have also written some books they are not accepted as being Aulia Allah on the basis of their scholarly ability. And this is happening in all religions, that people who are, uh, who have, who are following certain traditions, certain cultures, certain practices, that is religious practices, people look towards them for some kind of miracles. Magical acts are associated with them and it is on this very basis that they are accepted as being close to Allah. If you sit in religious cloisters, those who take care of the tombs of these elders or other devotees will continually narrate marvel after marvel relating to these elders and those listening will keep nodding their heads in appreciation. In a secular world now, these things are, have gradually disappeared. But in a wider sense, in all the parts where religion is still prevalent, these things exist. If you read their biographies, there will be no record in it of their scholarliness and intellectual pursuits. Even if some is found, it will be sparse. The whole book will be filled with tales of their miracles. Their fame will be due to these same miracles and they will earn a great name on the basis of these. People used to expect these kinds of unusual feats from the Ambiya as well and these were also demanded from them. Even now, 
some people do think who read the Quran in some analytical way think that what what these messengers of Allah did, which is given in the Quran, other human beings cannot do. And uh, since the last messenger had come and gone and the Quran is complete, hence how can we now follow the Quran when no more messenger is coming? And with these kinds of doubts and suspicions in someone's hearts, it is very difficult to convince them that it is ordinary human beings who will follow the Quran and get the same results as the messengers got in their own time. Next slide is the Quran is guidance for whole of mankind for all times. The addresses of Rasulullah used to request the same thing from him. And the reply which used to be received from Allah through the lips of Rasulullah was that my miracle is this book alone. Apart from this, no other miracle has been provided to me. And that should be our answer as well as students of the Quran that the book of Allah is a miracle in itself because human beings themselves cannot think like that. But once they follow the Quran, they will get the same results as the messengers got in their own time. This demand from the addressees and this reply from Rasulullah have been reiterated in the Quran at numerous places. A few verses are quoted here. In Surah Bani Israel, it is stated, They say, We shall not believe in you until you cause a spring to gush forth for us from the earth, or until you have a garden of date trees and vines and cause rivers to gush forth in their midst carrying abundant water. And one of the miracles which people expect today is that Allah somehow will intervene, for example, in Gaza and Palestine. And people do raise these questions that why our supplications are not being heard and why Allah is not interfering. This is the same mentality. And this mentality exists because of not understanding the Quran and the laws of Allah. Are you cause the sky to fall in pieces as you say will happen against us? Are you bring Allah and the angels before us face to face? Are you have a house adorned with gold? Are you mount a ladder right into the skies? No, we shall not even believe in your mounting until you send down to us a book that we can read. And nowadays, of course, this stands null and void because the whole book is with us preserved and we can look into it ourselves and analyze its contents. The next slide is Allah's laws do not change. The Quran puts forward these laws and that is how we should look at the Quran. These were the demands from their side and it is obvious that in these demands they were all united. Some who were making the demands and the rest waiting in anticipation to see whether this claimant of Nubuvat can demonstrate this or not. A very difficult task for someone who comes to the Quran even today and tries to convince others or try to pass on the message to others and everyone looks at you with a blank look that what is this guy talking about. This was the kind of multitude of addresses and standing before them was this claimant of messengerhood. And you know what response was received from him that is based on Wahi, this reply that O Rasul, say to them that firstly, this very concept of yours about Allah is false, that he will break his own laws of nature about which he, his decree is that these are immutable and will manifest such feats which go against nature. And that too, so that you can accept about this book that it is not a product of the intellect of this Rasul and is bestowed from Allah. In other words, this is about that book which at every step urges that you should employ your intellect and reasoning. None of my claims is against knowledge and vision. O Rasul, first tell them this, that this very concept of yours about Allah is batil, and then say to them that this belief of yours is also wrong, that the messengers of Allah should be superhuman. Say, I am but a man like yourselves. And all the students of the Quran should understand that they are also human beings just like the previous human beings. The next slide is the Quran needs the use of intellect and reasoning. This is why neither Allah himself will manifest such incidents against nature nor will I be able to display these from my side 
as I am a human being and no man possesses this ability and power that he can break the laws of Allah. In fact, if we understand the Quran and its laws for getting power through the procedure which is given in the Quran, though it is a bit lengthy procedure, but if it is followed wholeheartedly with patient by a number of uh, people who call themselves as mu'mineen, then the results do appear within one finite lifetime. You can imagine how their faces must have fallen after such a reply and how they will have dispersed grumbling and muttering among themselves. And what must not have passed in Rasulullah's gentle heart? These were the instances when these kinds of reassuring messages used to be revealed by Allah for the encouragement and strengthening of the heart of the messenger and of course his companions as well. Rejected were the messengers before you. So it is nothing new that people rejected the previous messengers and people will reject the message of the Quran even today. And we witness it. With patience and constancy, they bore their rejection and their wrongs until our aid did reach them. There is none that can alter the words and decrees of Allah. Already you have received some account of those messengers. So it is very reassuring that those messengers succeeded because they persevered on sirat e mustaqim And same laws are applicable today. These are available to us. And if we also continue, we will also get the results at some point in the future. After this, the Quran states, If their spurning is hard on your mind, yet if you are able to seek a tunnel in the ground or a ladder to the heavens and bring them a sign, what will happen? Nothing good will come out of it because it's not a question of miracles. If it were Allah's will, He could gather them together unto true guidance. So be not you amongst those who are swayed by ignorance. It's a very powerful verse and is addressed to the messenger and is addressed to us now that there are no shortcuts on this path that is called sirat e mustaqim We have to keep pursuing it with sole aim of getting results within our one lifetime. The next verse is people dislike the Quran as it goes against their base desires and that is the whole crux of it. Even if this kind of demand from these people is fulfilled, even then they are not among, among those who are going to accept demand. From this, there is a sign pointing to another very refined reality. These people were not rejecting this invitation of Rasulullah because this matter was not comprehended by them. The underlying reason for their rejection and opposition was that the vested interests of these people would have come to an end. And that is something very important for the students of the Quran, that people reject the Quran knowingly because they know that this goes against their desires. And I'll just quote one verse. For example, Quran says, they ask you what is to be kept open for others. And Quran says, beyond your need. And when someone who is very rich and uh, has accumulated it through all uh, means, he, is not, he or she is not likely to agree to the message of the Quran because they don't want to share their wealth which they accumulate with a lot of efforts and with a lot of dishonesty. Those economic advantages which they possess due to the capitalist system. So people who are beneficiaries of the man-made systems, they will not find any attraction in the Quran even if they read it day and night because this goes against their desires, against their benefits, which they have accumulated through the man-made system. And they become fearful of losing these benefits. All these would have been snatched away from them with the establishment of the system. This then was the real cause for their opposition. If we had sent unto you a written message on parchment so that they could touch it with their hands, the kuffar would have been sure to say, this is nothing but obvious magic. Because people find all kinds of excuses. They concoct it and they fabricate it to suit their own desires. And of course the Quran says they are only harming themselves because ultimately they are going to die and leave this life. And what is there for them in the hereafter? Nothing. In another verse it is stated, they would only say, our eyes have been intoxicated, nay, we have been bewitched by sorcery. These verses point to human negative psyche and we can see that 
examples of these being displayed in front of our own eyes as students of the Quran. This particular group of vested interests would not have accepted Iman as a result of such supernatural events, but the general populace would most certainly have been impressed by them and become followers of the messenger. This would have been against the Mashiat of Allah. This is against the Mashiat of Allah. If you remember the verse 256 of Surah Al-Baqarah says, La ikraha fi deen. Any internal or external persuasion which is in which our own free will is not involved is of no use for human self-development. People who somehow by looking at some of these uh, so-called miracles accept Iman, they are of no use to the system of deen of Allah. The Mashiat of Allah is purely this, that the right and wrong paths are placed clearly before people and then it is left to their choice and intent that they select whichever path they wish. The Quran states, say the truth is from your Rabb, let him who will accept Iman and let him who will reject it. It's a free volition, absolutely no compulsion internal or external. And this is the beauty of the Quranic passage. Next slide is, the Quran invites them to produce one like this. When this was said to them, they replied that we accept that you present this book before us, but our objection is indeed this, that when you state that this book is not drafted by me, it is instead bestowed from Allah, then we are not prepared to accept this. We can also write this kind of book ourselves. When our signs are rehearsed to them, they say, we have heard this before, if we wished, we could say words like these. These are nothing but tales of the ancients. And we do hear these kind of comments from people who do not wish to come to the Quran. Following this response, they were told, very well, we accept this. Then this is the decisive issue that if you can author an equivalent and similar book to this book, then this claim of ours will be false. Allah forbid and that this is not a book authored by a human being but is a book from Allah. Allah accepted the, their challenge. Say, if the whole of mankind, including those living in towns and those living in the wild, were to gather together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce the like thereof, even if they backed up each other with help and support. Such people actually move away and they never make any effort to understand the Quran that what is in it because they are not interested as it goes against their their being the beneficiary of the man-made system this quran is not a collection of tales of the ancients as they allege it contains immutable facts and eternal guidance covering all aspects of human life which we repeatedly present in different styles and ways so that every matter becomes clarified Actually, all this is for Mumineen, jamaat e mumineen because they are being educated and training by the Quran itself. And that is where we should concentrate. Keeping away from the Quran leads to absence of the system of deen. It is that simple. It is stated here that as you yourselves have claimed and demonstrated by producing a whole Quran like this Quran, at another place by reducing the demand from his side, it is stated, or they may say he forged it. Say, bring you then ten surahs forged like unto it and call to your aid whomsoever you can other than Allah if you speak the truth. So over here Quran says you can make ten surahs and one can try to make ten surahs like those exist towards the end of the Quran. They simply cannot. Say to them that if you are true in your claim that this is not a book of Allah, it is the pronouncement of a human being then leaving aside a whole Quran, bring forth ten surahs like it. And leaving Allah, ally yourselves with whoever you wish. Here a figure of ten surahs is mentioned and in Surah Yunus, by reducing this further, it is stated, Or do they say he forged it? Say, bring then a surah like unto it and call to your aid anyone you can besides Allah, if you speak the truth. And after this, the issue was taken to its extremity by stating the following. Let them then produce a recital like unto it, if they speak the truth. What is the main issue? As stated in verse 256, Quran says, That first 
you have to reject the man-made system and all its problems and people who may who are running that system and then have iman in allah and without doing that we simply cannot understand the quran because the system of deen is meant to replace the system of taghut the main issue is that if we are wholly dissatisfied with man-made systems then are we willing to explore the solution procedure and system as noted in the quran this also means recognizing the intricacies of the functioning of the man-made systems and their impacts on humanity throughout the world we inhabit this will lead us to the conclusion that the unbridled human intellect and desire simply cannot create any system which is good for the whole of mankind and which includes that self development towards which allah has drawn our attention in his book if we acquire an outlook which is interested in finding rationales for human creation and is keen to seek solutions to human problems then the quran starts to reveal the system of deen before us and the permanent values on which the structure of the system is erected so we need a developed self to understand the quranic system of deen and for that it is important to come together and to discuss every clause which is given in the quran the combination of iman and saleh deeds when grasped by the human mind leads to acquiring a new psyche which first of all transforms the inner human world and then leads to changes in the outer world very important sentence i have noted over here in the light of the quran now we go to the next verse that is the last verse of today's presentation 224 avoiding the path put forward by the quran leads to wars and destructions fa'in lam tafalu wa lan tafalu fattakun narallati wa quduha an-nas wal hijaratu wa iddat lil kafirin but if you do not accept our challenge and we will tell you that you will never accept it quran's challenge simply cannot be accepted because what is given in the quran as i said earlier human beings simply cannot think like that and do not try to understand the matter using intellect and reasoning rather keep advancing blindly in your opposition and stand up as an impediment on the path of haq then its outcome will be that hell of ruin and destruction in which your public and elites and cunning leaders and their followers will all fall into with their wealth and pomp and we can see that decline taking place right before our eyes across the world whether this happens in the form of war whose fire is lit via human hands and the instruments and weapons of warfare or whether it is in the form of the destructive outcome of the wrong system of life it doesn't make any difference quran has put forward all kinds of scenarios before us because everything has to happen through human hands when human beings make wrong decisions the results of those decisions are bound to appear at some point in the future In any event this is that hell which has been prepared by the deeds of those who refute and transgress against the correct code of life. Next slide is explaining it further. This verse is translated as but if you cannot and of a surety you cannot then fear the fire which is annar whose fuel is men and stones which is prepared for those who adopt kufr. A lot there and we will now go into further details they were told that when you will fail in meeting this challenge even then will you not accept this reality that this book is not the creation of some human intellect it is wahi from allah but if you do not accept this reality it will not cause any harm to anyone else you will fall into the fire of destruction into that fire whose fuel are annas that is human beings and al hijara which is normally translated as stones and which is the natural consequence of rejection of these truths in this verse the first word requiring explanation is annar the ordinary meaning of this is fire but just as phrases such as the fire of rage the fire of vengeance the fire of enmity the fire of jealousy and the fire of hate are commonly used among us the word annar was also used among the arabs for these meanings furthermore the arabs used to call that fire which was burnt on the tops of 
hills to declare war as narul harb and the meaning of narul kaum was that that nation was defeated from this the meaning of the word annar becomes clear the quran itself has used it for the meanings of destruction and ruin and defeat and humiliation explaining annar a bit further in surah al imran the jamaat e mu'minin are told to remember that favor of allah when you were bitter enemies of each other and he put mutual affection in your hearts and in this way you became brethren and you were on the brink of the pit of fire and allah saved you from falling into it it's worth going through this verse in more detail that is 103 of al imran where quran states that your hearts became united as mu'minin but you remember before that you were on the brink of the pit of fire and it is only through this book that you will become united and that's a very important point that is why all these sects and parties simply cannot disappear from the human world unless they come to the values of the quran it is obvious that the meaning of fire here is the essential consequence of mutual enmity and civil war between the people of a nation the quran itself has called this narul harb in surah nur it is firstly stated that allah will establish the jamaat e mu'minin in the land and then it is declared never think that those who do kufr are going to frustrate allah's plan on earth their abode is the fire and it is indeed an evil refuge the issue before us is that how should we get results by following the quran and obviously we cannot get the results unless we understand the quran the way quran wants us to understand the system of deen it is evident that annar here means defeat and a life of humiliation the meaning of annar in the quran is generally jahannam or hell and the common belief among us is that hell is such a place where flames of fire blaze and the kuffar will be pushed into it there is no doubt in this that jahannam in the life of the hereafter is the product of a life of crime and transgression and we have iman on this but jannat and jahannam are the names for those states of the heart whose process commences from this very life the next slide is explaining the term wakud used in the verse in the verse under view it is directed be fearful of that fire whose fuel is annas and al hijara that is stones annas of course means people or men the word wakud has been used for fuel fire is called wakdun and wakudun are those sticks which are used to light a fire and that is important because over here quran is referring to those sticks as being human beings and stones wood which is kept as fuel is called hatabun and these logs are called wakudun when they are kindled hence the meaning of wakudun nas wal hijaratu will be that fire whose flames will have been produced by annas and al hijara themselves this is definitely jahannam but its flames are not of its own the inhabitants of the world who come here bring their own fire with them this is the meaning of wakudu annas wal hijaratu this is also stated at a few other places for example in verse 666 these same words have appeared In Surah Al Imran, it is stated about the kafir; they are themselves but fuel for the fire. So the issue is that these people who do wrong, they become fuel themselves. They are the ones who burn themselves. In Surah Ambiya, it is said to those who follow Batil, "Verily, you unbelievers and the false gods that you follow besides Allah are but fuel for hell." only humans create fire for themselves animals don't do it because they don't have choice and intent they are programmed for what they do in this world the fuel for this jahannam will be annas and al hijara which are commonly translated as men and stones and the meaning which is taken from stones is those idols which people worship this meaning is fundamentally incorrect because the next words in the verse are that fire which is prepared for the kuffar the ones who reject it is obvious that stone whether uncarved or carved into some figure is neither momen nor kafir 
So the idols made of stones are neither Mu'min nor Kafir. So over here, the meaning of stones is not correct. Mu'min and Kafir are human beings, not stones. The fire which is prepared for the Kuffar, what is the purpose of throwing stones into it? The common meaning of Anas is humanity, but when this word is used for comparison, then its meaning will be that of people generally. For example, the Quran states about the religious clerics, your state is such that you advise the people to do righteous deeds and forget about your own selves, though you study the book yourselves. And the Quran has said, nasa bil anfusakum. If we read the Arabic of this uh, verse over there, Anas are mentioned at the beginning. Do you not understand this much that the commands of the book are equally applicable to the people and the clergy? In another verse, it is stated about these relig religious clerics who in falsehood devour the possessions of men. It is apparent that at these places, Anas means the people following the religious clergy. Explaining Hijara, that is stones. From this, it is evident that by Anas is meant the general public, and those who are giving the commands are the leaders of the nation or those holding power. From these and other similar verses, it is clear that Anas means the public, i.e., those people who follow behind the national leaders, that is, religious clergy and rulers. We come to the word Hijara. Its root is this, whose basic meaning is to stop and forbid. And from this is meant the intellect which tells man at what point he should halt. The word aklun itself also means to stop and to forbid. From this aspect, a man who is very shrewd and astute is called hajrun. The Quran has called such people zi hijrin, i.e. individuals possessing intelligence and insight, but only those possessing intelligence and insight who are very clever and shrewd. That is, they use this intelligence and insight for their own self-interest. These are the very people who, having become religious clerics, national leaders or rulers, become impediments on the paths leading to Allah. So from this, the meaning of وَقُودُ هَنَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ will mean the public and their leaders. The mutual altercations in Jahannam, that is hell, between the public and their leaders are described in a metaphorical way in a very instructive style in the Quran. Two verses explaining this aspect. In Surah Saba it is stated, The unbelievers say, We shall neither have Iman in their scripture nor in any that came before it. Could you but see when the wrongdoers will be made to stand before their rub, throwing back the word of blame on one another. And in hell, there is always accusations and counter accusations going on, and we can witness, witness this on media in today's world. Those who had been despised will say to the arrogant ones, had it not been for you, we should certainly have been mominin. The arrogant ones will say to those who had been despised, was it we who kept you back from guidance after it reached you? Nay, rather it was you who transgressed. Those who had been despised will say to the arrogant ones, Nay, it was a plot of yours by day and by night. Behold, you constantly ordered us to be ungrateful to Allah and to attribute equals to Him. They will declare their repentance when they see the penalty. We shall put yokes on the necks of the kafirun it would only be a requital for their ill deeds. There's a lot in this uh, verse for us. For example, when our elections end in any country, we see there are accusations and counter accusations, and there is also desperation, regrets, disappointments. And these things happen in a man-made system because human beings follow under relative values. And this is also the state of those families who also follow relative values. If we follow permanent values, we will see that there will be a calmness within the members of every family which is following the Quran. But this excuse of theirs will not be considered acceptable and they will all be made to enter hell together. In Surah As-Safat it is stated, those entering Jahannam will accuse each other. The followers will say to their leaders that you used to bombard and assault us and in this way used to put us on the wrong path. 
they, they will reply that what control and authority did we have over you? You yourselves never desired to tread on the right path. It is true that we were on the wrong path, but we never compelled you to follow this path. You followed us yourselves, and that is the crux of it. People follow their leaders, and they follow them blindly, and when the unwanted results appear before them, then they complain and they start accusing each other. We are all now sharing this punishment together then it becomes too late. And we see that being displayed in today's world everywhere. Next is some general conclusions. These two verses invite us to ponder on the overall importance of the Quran as the book of guidance from Allah. We need to accept its challenge and try to see if our unbridled intellect can think of the aspects of the human psyche covered within its folds. We will see for ourselves that the Quran explains to us both states of our psyche, i.e. before coming to the Quran, what kind of a psyche we possessed. And since we were not happy with that, we were not happy with the state of affairs in the world. So we wanted to expand our understanding, expand our vision so that we could see the solutions to the human problems and how we acquire a new psyche after following the Quran. And the Quran called this new psyche, new life. And that is the purpose of human creation in the world that we create a new life through our own efforts using the Quranic value system. Finding out this fact that the Quran is not the product of human intellect leads to building that firm conviction called Iman, which then leads to coming together willingly through free volition in order to work for the system of Deen. So Iman is not something which is abstract, which is not known to us, but the change which takes place within our own outlook, within our own psyche, within our own self becomes an evidence for ourselves when we check it in the light of the Quran and the signs given in the Quran that we have acquired Iman. Mentioning verse 223 right at the outset, Allah is giving us the opportunity to opt for expanding our consciousness. And that is our choice. Do we want to expand our consciousness which can understand the problems of the world and which can also understand that there is a life in the hereafter coming and making ourselves ready for that, where the reality of our existence as humans becomes absolutely clear. And this is not otherworldly, it is placed within our reach by the Quran. With this expanded vision acquired by choice, we advance forward seeking further aspects of this reality of our being human on the path of self-development. And where with every passing day we move forward away from the plight of those who refuse to come to this path and who opt instead to follow the path of fire and eternal ruin, where no possibility for self-development remains. And we see that in the world of today, after becoming the students of the Quran, the two realities become very clear before us because after acquiring Iman with the developed self, those things which were hidden from our eyes, which we had no clue about them, now those become clearly manifested before our vision. Thanks for your time and for sharing this today. Please feel free to share it with your contacts. You may like to subscribe for future talks related to the Quranic system of Deen.